As we all know, Honor used to be a part of Huawei, the banner of Chinese high-tech companies, and the honor of using Huawei chips used to be the pride of China. However, according to a report, the honor that flows from Huawei's bloodline, after its division, the US chips in Honor mobile phones accounted for as high as 38.5%, an increase of nearly 30% compared with before. Among them, most of the core high-end chips including main control chips, 5G general semiconductors, and analog chips have been replaced with American chips. So a brand with Huawei DNA now uses so many American chips, is this a failure for it? Is the honor of the return still honorable? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tech Teller. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's move on to today's topic. In fact, Chinese mobile phone manufacturers that rely heavily on American components are not limited to honor. According to a survey by Japan's Fomalhort, American components accounted for 26% of Xiaomi's folding screen mobile phone mix fold to be launched in 2021, American components accounted for 31% of the OPPO Reno 6 Pro Plus model, which focuses on the mid-to-high-end market. In various series of domestic mobile phones, the main processors are almost all products of Qualcomm or MediaTek in Taiwan. From my perspective, Honor's use of a large number of American chips is the result of the superposition of multiple factors, and there are special reasons for this. On the one hand, in the face of the severe international situation and the reality of the gap between domestic and international chips, Honor has to increase the purchase of American chips in order to survive and develop. There are both political and industrial reasons for this. On the other hand, after Huawei was sanctioned, the strength of domestic semiconductor manufacturers was still weak and the technical competitiveness was insufficient. If Honor wants to survive and regain its market position, it is very difficult to find domestic similar chip manufacturers that can replace Huawei chips in a short period of time. According to report, the main control, communication, and power control semiconductors previously manufactured by Huawei's high silicon semiconductor have been changed to Qualcomm products. These chips are important components for Honor mobile phones to maintain their leading position. However, there is a lack of local chips that can rival Huawei, so they have to rely on international chip giants to achieve their goals. So, is the adoption of American chips a failure of Honor? Adopting American chips does not mean failure. It is a helpless move for Honor to adopt American chips. This is a special cooperation method at a special historical stage, although this cooperation method is not what we expected. Faced with the return of Honor that uses a large number of American chips, can we use the patriotic slogan and accuse Honor of this behavior as a comprador? Obviously not. We can't use meaningless public opinion to attack a Chinese brand that is trying to survive. We should be soberly aware that Honor has no choice but to use American chips. On the one hand, Honor wants to participate in international competition by using American chips. Only through cooperation can American chip companies help Chinese companies mediate with the US government and ease the pressure on Chinese companies to be sanctioned. There is politics, industry, reality, disparity, unwillingness, and helplessness, but this is correct. In fact, it reminds me of the incident two years ago when SMIC was subject to export control by the United States. At that time, as soon as SMIC's statement was issued, some unknown media said that SMIC was weak coward, and even said that SMIC was a technical comprador. This will not only help Chinese companies survive, but will only make the situation more difficult. At that time there was SMIC, and now there is honor, and more Chinese companies may be sanctioned tomorrow. We should not blame them when they need to survive and develop by adopting the US supply chain and have to seek US cooperation especially when the United States is working with its partners to establish a semiconductor alliance similar to CHIP4. In the face of the aggressive situation of the United States, the development of the domestic semiconductor industry is becoming more and more difficult. From this, we can know how great Huawei is. Huawei is currently one of the few 100% Chinese domestic companies in China. It has no foreign investment. Unlike Alibaba, which has a stake in Japan's SoftBank, and Tencent, which has a South African company, 
Although these companies appear to be very powerful, there are foreigners behind it, Huawei does not have any foreign participation, and it is also the only company that can enter the world's top 500 companies without going public. In fact, if Huawei were to go public, its market value would be immeasurable and it could earn more money, but the reason why Huawei chose not to go public is to prevent foreign capital from entering the controlled enterprise. Another reason for not listing is that Huawei wants to build a Chinese brand, which is Huawei's choice. Huawei has 194,000 employees. What's more, it also has nearly 100,000 employees, most of whom are high-tech talents. We should like to ask, if Huawei can't provide these people with jobs and wages, will these talents stay in China? Or go abroad? Moreover, in terms of taxation, in 2020, Huawei will pay 101 billion yuan in taxes to the country, and it also continues to purchase a large number of domestic assembling parts, such as Bose screens, Yangtze River storage chips, O, oh, LiFace camera modules, BYD's camera frames, etc., all of which are invisibly driving the revenue of domestic enterprises and the development of China's GDP. Another benefit of supporting domestic products is that it will stimulate domestic production and development, improve the trust of domestic people in domestic products, enhance national pride and cohesion, reduce the loss of national wealth, and increase employment opportunities. So the car that the Japanese drive is Toyota, and the mobile phone used by the Koreans is Samsung.at at the same time. Every slight increase in China's domestic GDP means that 1 million to 1.3 million people can be employed. Although it is just a number on the surface, it is related to thousands of families and livelihoods. So this is the huge social benefit that Huawei can bring, for example, Huawei has more than 85,000 R&D patents, ranking first in China. The research and development investment exceeds 400 billion yuan and the country pays more than 100 billion yuan in taxes every year. Every year, it earns a lot of dollars back to China. Since 2000, it has reached 1.39 trillion yuan so far, all in all, from the incident of honor. We should realize that the development of the domestic semiconductor industry has to bear the burden of humiliation and survive first, and then grow. But only by survival can we develop, and only by development can we grow. Only through the darkness can we usher in the dawn. The honor of using American chips is still honorable, and there is no need to blame it. From my perspective, the positive approach is that the domestic industry should actively seek cooperation with the international semiconductor industry to find ways to alleviate challenges and solve problems. At the same time, China chip still has to be self-improvement and forge ahead in a difficult environment. In terms of public opinion, when domestic chips cannot be replaced, we should not use moral kidnapping to squeeze the living space of domestic companies. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.